Okay, so uh, hello everyone and welcome again to this third part of this Master Your Connection Summer Series webinar. Today, um, we will talk about the topic of Share Connections, which is not just intended for uh, beginners, but also for um, ideas data users who wanted to refresh on their skills regarding idea statica connection application. Um, my name is Jean. I'm product engineer from Idea Statica Asia and Pacific based in Singapore. And I am your presenter for today. Um, as usual, we are using the GoToWebinar platform application and you are muted by default. So if you have some um, questions during the webinar, um, you can type in your questions at the web, uh, GoToWebinar application. And for some reasons, if we don't have, if you, we run out of time to respond to your questions, um, we will uh, try to answer it via email. And may I just want to uh, remind everyone that the whole session of this webinar is being uh, recorded. So um, this series of five short webinars is actually uh, called Master Your Connections. Um, today we are using uh, the series Sheer Connections, uh, which you will um, learn quickly all the basics. And of course, um, after the webinar, you can also watch the recordings from our YouTube channel and also in our support center web page. Right now we are uh, out of this five series. We are now in the middle of this series. And after this, we still have two more webinars coming in, uh, which is the complex joint connections. And another one is on the BIM link. Um, previously, my colleague uh, Vlastimil, um, he discussed about um, moment connections and he talks something about uh, connection classifications uh, he talks about stiffness analysis in idea statica connections and design and analysis of moment connections as well as uh, he, he speak about uh, stiffness analysis results uh, interpretation so um, today's topic um, we have actually four shear connections um, shear connections is actually one of the most commonly used type of connections, um, probably because uh, it's much easier to construct compared to moment connection. However, um, it just doesn't have the stiffness capacity of what the moment connection have. So in general, um, shear connection doesn't have the doesn't provide the lateral stability of the structure. Uh, this type of connections is actually most commonly used on braced frame type of structure where um, bracings and diagonals are present. Um, we will also look into the templates for shear connections and also speak about how to load them correctly. And also um, we have to define how to correctly place the load force position and when necessary, it is, we'll have to look into where to change the modal type. And lastly, uh, we will have a look at the stiffness analysis as well. So um, let me turn off my uh, camera and start with uh, uh, my presentation. So what are shear connection? Um, a typical characteristic of uh, shear connection is that um, it can transfer shear forces um, with no bending moment or perhaps uh, very little bending moment. It can be uh, loaded pure or normal force like 
example, tension joint or uh, pure shear loading or a combination of both uh, normal and shear force. Another special group of connections are called uh, feed connections, which also transfer uh, normal forces and shear forces, but the difference is it can rotate freely, so uh, there's no uh, bending moment actually present. I have an example of uh, an image of connections. So on the left hand side, you can see there are shear connections using uh, fin plates. The other one is using uh, uh, shear connections using angle bars as a uh, cleats. On the right hand side of the image is a pin connection. So shear connections, how do we uh, model, how do we model them actually? So we have the possibility to use a template actually when we do model this, these connections. So the first one is we have uh, connection wizard, which is uh, the most common one and uh, the default way of doing the connections. We also have the possibility to use the right click command. In right click command, the connection library will pop up and you have the templates that will appear and that you select which type of shear connections you want to use. The next available command is actually the proposed command, similar to the connection, the right click, which you, the connection library will also pop up and we will let you select the type of connection that you want to use. And for some instance, you don't want to make use of these connections. You can actually uh, start from scratch. And from if you want to start from scratch, we have you have the possibility to select various manufacturing operations where you have some basic uh, manufacturing operations over there. There are 25 operations. An example of that is we have gusset plate, pen plates, shear tabs, uh, shear end plates, and so on. So um, let's jump into the connection. I will go to end my slides now and open Idea Statica connection application. So I'm going to hit connection. And the connection wizard actually will appear. So in the connection wizard, you have there a class, geometry, uh, design, and parameters. Under class, you have a beam to column connection. You also have uh, a beam to beam connections, and you also have uh, truss joints. So because truss is also somewhat like belongs to a shear type of connection because all those um, forces are axial and shear force. Under um, class beam to column, we, we have the possibility to choose what type of uh, structure we want to, uh, what type of uh, topology we want to use depending on the structure that we have. In this case, we can possibly make use of this uh, geometry. And under this sign, once you hit that button, you actually can see that there are various kinds of templates that can be used. Now you can see the moment connections and you can also shear, see the shear connections. You have, when, when you use shear connections, you have the possibility to use uh, either cleats or you can also use uh, fan plates uh, or a little bit of both, you can use that. If you don't want to use this kind of templates, you always have the possibility to use uh, blank connections. In this case, um, this demonstration, I'm going to use this blank connection and I will leave the default parameters in and I'm going to create a new project. OK, 
Okay, so we have here a, a blank project where we only see our our um, columns and beams. So the options that we can probably use to design the connections is like I mentioned earlier is whether you can right click, and when you right click, there's a drop down menu that says you can connect to uh, which member. So I'm going to select this member, and once we have that this connection uh, library will appear and you can pre-select all your uh, connections that you wanted to make use of. You also have under um, loading type, you have the possibility to filter all these uh, templates to let's say movement or shear or trust. In our case, let's just make use of shear instead. So it is being, uh, Selected that's this type of shear, you have the possibility to choose either which templates you want to use. So I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to make use of the default settings there. So you will see that our connections is now uh, complete using those uh, uh, way of modeling. Another example is if, if I'm say I want to delete this. Another example is you can use the propose button, this uh, icon right here and click on propose, the same as uh, right click, the connection library will also appear. So it's kind of like the same, but it just two different ways of how to do it. So let's say we want to use this um, thin plate as a, a thin place here. I'm gonna click on okay. And I will leave the same default values. As you can see, um, the templates will actually have using being uh, the model changed to this one. So from here, if I change on the view, you will have the possibility to change the parameters on this side. For example, you want to change the thickness or you want to change the position to, let's say, rear. Uh, Put it back to the front or you can even change it to welded say you your connection is now welded let's just say that this is a bolt and you also have the possibility to change the bolt direction or the bolt spacing so let's say uh, 25 and let's say i want to add another one so let's say another 25 over there so it will appears like that so just uh want to tell you that based on this um, modeling, you, your, your reference point is actually at the center line. So if you look into the uh, transparency view, this is actually considered at the center line. So if I'm going to make use of a uh, top of steel, you will see that my reference point is now at the top of the steel right there. So you can also make some modeling like this. So for example, I want to make some changes to, uh, let's say, uh, I want to add some other 50 over here, to make the size of the bolts. I'm going to leave like that. And for, say for the spacing, I want some more 50. Or if you want to add another one, another 50. So it pretty looks much OK. go back to model view and my connection is complete. So actually from here, you can already uh, start your analysis. Huh? Uh, so we just have to apply some loads in it. So for example, I want to put some loads of let's say 40 kilonewton. And I want to run the analysis. You'll see that the analysis is incomplete and it seems to be working fine. No, I think that the, visually there's no uh, error on it, but to do that, we have to counter check whether everything is really correct. So here you can see the equivalent stresses is working fine. I can actually enable the mesh, see, and I also can enable the deformation. 
but it seems like there is something wrong with our model right here. Huh? I mean, our loads is actually going down, but the deformation is actually going up. So there's something wrong. It's wrong in this model, actually. That's the case. So let me just uh, uh, jump back to my presentation again. I want to show my presentation. Okay. So actually, we have to realize how to um, correctly define the loads. So what does it mean? In this example, in this imagery right here, the left side, uh, it's actually the rail shape of the joint, which is um, cut apart from a global analytical model, um, which is probably, for example, your your design connection or design uh, software, like, for example, uh, Sapro, ETABS, uh, RSTEM, and so on. On the other hand, is actually uh, uh, the theoretical shape where uh, the joint is actually represented by um, 1D member and intersected along its axis. So in, in, in idea static connection, we actually uh, define the loads at the nodes or at the point where the axis intersects. So this is where the default uh, way so in this example, actually, uh, the connection is a combination of shear force and bending moments is defined. And um, because we want to have distribution of forces along the cut of part of those members, um, it needs to be uh, extrapolated somehow uh, farther from those nodes. So, um, Let's assume that the shear force is constant um, and while well, bending moment has a, a linear distribution, slope is uh, defined or its tangent is equal to the shear force. So for such general connections where um, bending moment and shear force are defined, um, you can have such a distribution and you will always have the possibility to um, display the bending moment in idea statica connection application. And in the hinge, um, we actually, were, we input our bending for the hinge. Um, the bending moment would look like this, actually, you know, the, at, at the, the nodes, the bending moment is zero. So there's actually no moment at all. But in reality, the position of the real hinge is not at the intersection of its axis but uh, it's sometimes due to the size of the members of the position so the hinge is shifted on the different position so just like this you can see that the hinge is located away farther from the nodes and you can see that from here there is already a uh, bending moment acting on it what we can do is either we shift the we shift the um, location of the hinge from the global analytical model, or we can make the adjustment in idea static connection application itself. So how do that? In the connection application, we have the possibility to change the exact position of the hinge. Now, uh, in the figure in the left hand side, where uh, the force is actually acting at the nodes. So this is actually for standard configuration. We can see that there's already a bending moment right at the this part right there, and this is this bending moment is um, this one is the one that causes the upward deformation. What we can do in the model is um, we can shift the direction of the forces into the the bolts. So if we change these forces in bolts, you will see that the the, the Centroid of the bolts, uh, I mean, the, the direction of the force will now be shifted into the center of the bolts, and there will be no bending moment at it. So let me uh, go back to my model and I will shift to the design tab and I will make this um, I will make this to bolt then. 
So you will see now that it's now into the centroid of my uh, of the bolt group. See, if, if I put it back, now the, the zero moment is actually here, but when you do that, actually the moment right there. So the correct way to do is always use this pulse right here. So I think I can run now the analysis. And I'm going to check again, see if it's working. And the deformed shape is now correct. Now, even if I, I exaggerate the, the scale of this one, so the deformation is actually now going down just like where our loads is going through. So I can actually move that back, scale, go it back, and so it like that. So another possibility to model this one um, is um, I want to show the editor, plate editor, where, for instance, uh, there are some times that you, you want to do change the position of the bolts or perhaps remove some of the bolts. You can do this in plate editor. And in this example, let's say I want to um, explode and remove these bolts right here. I can just uh, delete this stuff and maybe change the position of this to say 5 and then change this to 25 as well. And you also have the possibility to change all to slotted holes. You want that, and let's say, I want to make it center longer, apply, and you will see that slotted holes are being applied into the model. And if you want to run analysis, just, I want to highlight that when, when you use slotted holes, um, you just bear in mind that um, there is no, um, boundary conditions at the direction of the slot hole. So your analysis cannot be complete because nobody is supporting your uh, loads over there because of the slot. So it won't perform an analysis and you will have zero analysis. How to do this is um, there are two options. You either, um, you add some additional support right here, for example, cleats, or for instance, you can also use, you can also make use of, um, let's say, you want to use preloaded bolts and you want to do friction. Uh, this is not commonly used for this kind of type of connections, but for this demonstration, I want to show it how does this work. So if I change that to friction and run the analysis, so it now can, able to run the analysis by using the friction resistance. Okay, so you also have the possibility to change that. So if I go back to what you call the shear transfer and just um, make use of another template. So let's say, for example, I want to make use of cleat and I want to add a cleat at the bottom. So I just want to say, want to change it, the bottom flange. And I want to change the size of the cleat to just this one. And maybe the length of the cleat to 125. Oh, it doesn't look good. So I will change it to just at the bottom. And you will have that one. So, um, from here, I can also change the, the bolt position to, let's say, uh, 30, 60, and then say this is 15. So the bolt size will actually be changed in orientation. So now I can, my force can, can support this, uh, this kind of connection. So I can now run the analysis. and it now working fine. So that's another options of how to uh, do it if you have some uh, slatted holes connection. 
Okay, um, one, I need to put some other examples. So maybe I make a copy out of this. And I wanna, I wanna make use of this as, I want to say I want to delete this clip, delete, and I put this back to, and I want to put this back to uh, normal holes. Gonna apply. And this time I want to add some members. So the members, I will change this to the metric pack to end it. And I'm going to make use of a new profile. This profile I say, let's just say I want to make use of uh, this size right here, 76 hollow section, circular hollow section. And I want to rotate it to 45 degree angle. Make it like that. And this time I want to add some manufacturing operations for like the gossip. So here I can say that I want to load that one and relate that member to member C and also related to um, member uh, B. So the gussets will actually be connected to the, these two members. And I have the possibility to change the thickness of the gusset and perhaps the depth of the gusset to say 200. But I don't want to weld this uh, member right here to the gusset. Uh, so I want to just put no welds over there. But instead, instead of welding, I want to create um, uh, uh, this connecting plate instead. Um, so I'm going to click this and I'm going to connect that to member number M, uh, member M3. And I'm going to make use of the gusset plate, which is an existing plate. And then I will choose gas number one. So from here, I can edit the position. Let's say, uh, distance from the nose, I want to change that to let's say 400 and I will maintain the thickness and I'm gonna change the plate length to let's say 150, plate width to um, 100. Okay. So it seems like we have some um, warning right here. Uh, it doesn't look good, but if you look into the Transparency view, we can see that okay, there are some clashings behind this uh, this model. So um, what we can do is actually uh, trim those gasset and instead go to the gasset operation, and I will click on the editor right there. From the plate editor, you have the possibility to chamfer or bevel or even uh, round those edges. In this case, we can just say I'm, I'm going to chamfer it. I'll click on chamfer and let's say I want to um, apply some chamfer of it about 75 mm and I will choose uh, corner number two because that's where I'm going to cut. I'm going to click apply and you will see that the warning is gone and our there's no more um, clashing into our model. So I think we are now ready to um, do the analysis and all we have to do is just apply the loads then. So here I'm, for example, I just want to say, I want to add 50 kilonewton of uh, tension force right there. So it seems like going fine. I can now hit on calculate. So yeah, the analysis is done pretty quickly and it seems it's working okay, but let's do the check tab again and see if it's equivalent section. Uh oh, so we have some problems again. And 
it doesn't seem to be working correctly, if this is the case, huh? because our load is actually intention, but the deformation against is going somewhere else. So there's something wrong in it. Um, let me uh, jump back to my presentation again. Yes. So another important thing to consider when actually uh, modeling a pin connection. So, um, so for pin connections, we have to actually change the model type because for pin connection, the bolt, uh, I mean the uh, the pin itself is um, actually being holding on to just with one bolts there. So um, it doesn't have uh, rotational stiffness. So that's why you will have uh, you when when you look into the image on the right side, uh, the connections it seems unstable. Um, if we change the model type to uh, to be free on rotation, so we have um, which uh, only means that the normal force and shear force will be considered, we will then get uh, the correct results. So in this case, if we change the model type to uh, N, V, Y, V, Z, which is uh, normal force and shear force, we will have the correct uh, deformation of the structure. So let me uh, go back again to my model and I'm going to hit the design tab. And again, I'm going to change this to model type to N, V, Y, and V, Z. So if I click on calculate, and check again the deformation, you will see that our deformation is now correct. So we don't have those problems again of instability uh, that the, the members is just deforming on uh, away from the structure. So um, we don't have uh, much times perhaps. So I just now want to very quick uh, overview of the connection, uh, stiffness connection. So if you are not sure whether your connection behaves more like a rigid connections that provide more rotational stiffness or pin or somewhere in between, you can always run the stiffness analysis in idea statica connection. So in that case, you can, once you do that, you can uh, make use of the rotational capacity and use it to your um, global analysis model. So let me just uh, close my connection and demonstrate the model. So maybe um, here I'm going to make use of the existing connection and I'm going to make a copy out of it. So from here, I'm going to click on the design tab and under analysis type, I'm going to change this to stiffness. So in stiffness analysis, you will always have to um, assign uh, which member to analyze. So in our case, we are going to analyze this beam. So uh, this is set to um, analyze member. Uh, we only have two um, members right here. So the beam has been pre-selected. In this case, we can add a load to proceed with our analysis. But before that, I'm going to remove those, um, remove those slotted holes and change this to normal holes instead. I'm gonna click on apply, okay. And and probably apply some movements over there. I'm gonna move this and say, I'm gonna just say 10 kilonewton meter. So I have a mo moment of 10 kilonewton meter. From here, I can run the stiffness analysis. So 
it will take a little bit of time so because it will have the iteration that it requires to calculate the stiffness is there a while you can see you have the results and if you go to the check tab and go to rotational stiffness we can see that it's actually we have a semi-rigid classification of this type of connection so it's not rigid it's not thin but it is semi-rigid so um that uh basically uh that's basically the end of my demonstration for the content of um today's webinar um, i just wanted to say a few things um, i would like to invite everyone to um, join idea stantica campus it is actually an online platform used for educating our users how to correctly use our idea Satika software. Of course, there are special courses that you can uh, also study from by your own pace. And after completing those courses, you have the possibility to uh, get certificate should you uh, require one. And what's next? Um, we still have two more um, Master Your Connection series webinar. Uh, one is coming on 22nd of August, which is to be uh, done by, by my colleague, going to discuss uh, complex joints connections. And on the 5th of September, we have uh, BIM links, and I'm going to demonstrate that in the webinar as well. So, uh, Thank you very much for your attendance today. And after the webinar, you will get asked for a very quick short survey. And also the recording will be available at our webpage and also in our YouTube channel. And if you want to uh, try Idea Statica connection application, you can download the 14 uh, day trial version. And of course, uh, there are also lots of documentation available into our uh, support and uh, support and learning web page. There are documentations, tutorials, and webinars. So please go to our page and find out more. So again, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye.